In this video, I will show you a trick that I learned in school to remember the spinal cord injury levels for the upper body. If you're having trouble with this, then definitely check this out. Let's get functional. We can get function with me, from A to Z, reaching your goals fully, I'm an OT. C1 to C4 are easy to remember because C stands for cervical, so neck muscles. C4 is important to remember because it's a level that the client can be no longer ventilator dependent and can be weaned off of it. You can remember this because spore rhymes with four and you don't want to breathe in certain spores or molds that cause respiratory disease. Here's how to remember the levels from C5 to C8. This is a little silly, but it helped me to remember the movements for the shoulders and upper extremities. The scenario to remember is that you're going out for a blind date at 6 p.m. Relate the levels to the time of evening related to your date. C5 we fly, so you get shoulder flexion and abduction, scapular abduction and adduction, and elbow flexion. Nothing distal yet. You actually arrive early at your dinner for your date, and you wait and you wait. For C6 or 6 o'clock, you check your watch. So you get forearm supination because you're fancy and you wear your watch on the inside, and you also extend your wrist naturally to see the watch and time. For C7, or at 7 p.m., your date finally arrives, but they're not who you expected. You got catfished. You decide not to be rude and proceed with the date. You get up and give them an awkward hug like this. At 8 p.m., the date isn't going that well, and they're actually quite rude. So at C8, you hate, and you end the date for the evening, waving them bye-bye. This includes the hand's extrinsic muscles, but not the intrinsics yet. And then from T1 onwards, all the upper extremities are fully intact, but of course, there's limited trunk stability and paralysis of the lower extremities. Now, let's talk about some other important ADLs to consider for spinal cord injuries on the exam. To remember these, use a trick that you learned just to apply what kind of functional ADLs you can do. This is much easier than memorizing each ADL for each level, for example. Remember C4 or SPORE, so no ventilator? Sip and puff for electric wheelchair mobility. For C5, you get independent feeding with C5 because we fly and bring food to our mouth with adapted utensils. You can imagine doing some grooming too, but they will need help with things like shaving. Client can now use hand controls for the electric wheelchair. C6 is a big one. When you check your watch on your wrist, you get the tenodesis grasp pattern to pick up things functionally and for bed mobility. Client can do a lot of ADLs for the upper extremity, including brushing teeth with a modified electric toothbrush, they can dress their upper body with adaptive equipment and bathe their upper body as well. Client can also now use a manual wheelchair for short distances. And at C6, client can resume driving with adaptive vehicle controls. Remember C7, we give the awkward hug transfers. So you can use elbow extension to push off. This allows the client to transfer between surfaces. Client can also catheterize themselves too. At C8, since finger movement is more functional with manipulation of objects, they would be able to not need adaptive equipment as much. T1, think Terminator, like the movie. I think there is a model T1 in the Terminator too. Anyways, Terminator terminates or eliminates, get it? So independent with bowel and bladder function. Hope this helps you remember these spinal cord injury levels. Thumbs up and subscribe if you found this information helpful. Thanks for watching.